Welcome back in the Chapel Spotlight today, the all new, all refined, or so we hope, the B-Side EDM S9CL. 10,000 counts of EBTN backlit goodness for your pleasure. Let's take a look. If you remember my other review on the B-Side EDM S7 was not so sparkly. No, I was a little bit peeved with that POS. Yes, I was not a happy camper. Didn't like what I got, and at the end of the day, I thought it sucked the big one. Does the ADM S9CL, whew, that's a mouthful, do any better? But we're going to put it to the test, and we're going to take out its little brother and see how they match eye to eye. In the proverbial box, well, not a whole heck of a lot. We've got this. Actually, it's new compared to its uh, older brother, and I kind of like it. It is a, a strap, obviously, but this one is all PVC rubber yeah uh-huh i like it it's got a really nice kind of feel to it i think it's going to definitely last a lot longer than that other typical hanger we also got this little velcro strap now this is to tie the leads back because unfortunately there is no retaining mechanism for these test leads so basically they're kind of dangling as i pointed out in my first review also ships with this little user guide manual in a nice accordion style fashion actually fairly good glossy style quality nice pictures and it is in both chinese and english looking good say one thing 2019 is definitely the year of the smart multimeter at least that's what they like to make us think but as we've seen in past reviews they're not all that smart in fact most of them are pretty damn dumb in the hand it has a pretty good heft to it actually it definitely weighs a little bit more than its younger brother and um, it just feels for whatever reason just a little bit better quality so hmm, yeah size wise pretty well identical um, could say it's the size of an iPhone 5 perhaps uh, yeah pretty close to the Samsung S7 in terms of the overall size and thickness just a tad bit thicker but nonetheless yeah that gives you a good general idea that'd be so cool if this thing came with a sim card imagine wow on the left the s7 on the right the new nine and yeah once again as you can see they are pretty well identical in terms of the overall look buttons are pretty well where they were before a couple of slight variances uh instead of a hold button as on the old one we have now that's been replaced with the capacitance uh, voltage alert and live are all the same the flashlight button as well is the same and uh, the other main difference is here we have the uh, volts acdc frequency uh, resistance and uh, continuity and they've added the capacitance and diode feature to the s9 i'm going to turn these on for the first time and in terms of the actual boot up yeah you can see just a tad difference now Definitely the new S9, a lot easier on the eyes. Wow, like night and day. I think one area where the older S7 wins is probably contrast. As you can see, it definitely has a better viewer angle, viewing angle, uh, no matter how you look at it. As well, you've got this uh, timeout on the backlight of the S9, which is a little bit of a pain, but it does tend to uh, go into like a dimming mode after a very short period of time. Yeah, I'm really sorry, but I just have not seen the little S7 anywhere. If I do, though, I'll let you know. Now, unfortunately, these do not have a tilt stand. That's what I said, no tilt stand. DC accuracy mode, 2.6 volts. Switching to the millivolts, and you can see it just can't read that low. It's not that smart after all. Too bad. Sitting at 0.6 volts right now. Here we go with our DC test. Head to head, shoot down, showdown, whatever you want to call it. We're down. Starting off at 7.9 volts. No, let's make it 8, 8 even. 8.1 for the S7, 8.2 for the S9. Taking it up to 12.8 volts. 13.0, both of them. Going to go up, up and away. 16.9 volts. 16 point, I'm going to give it 16.9 for the 7. 17.1, a little high for the new 9. Up, up and away. 23.2 volts. 23.2 
for the 7. 23.5, a little high again for the newer 9. Up, up, and away. Waxing it out. 31.5 volts. 31.8 for the S9. 31 point... Oh, it's thinking. Uh, I'm going to give it a 5.6 for the 7. So, hey, interesting, interesting, interesting. I'm definitely going to give this one to the older S7. Just a little faster and a little more accurate. Surprise, surprise. I was not expecting that. Now we're looking at those bar graphs. I'm just fluctuating the voltage back and forth. And really that bar graph is useless on either of these because really we're not getting much indication of anything. Take a look at the viewing angle. Surprisingly now I'm thinking the S9 is actually easier on the eyes than the 7. I thought because of the basic LCD display that the 7 was the winner in the contrast department. But you know what? Eh, I'm going to take that back. I'm going to give that to the S9. Fortunately, in the frequency department, it is a fail. It is not able to read anything from 40 to 1000 hertz. Nada. So, wow, that is disappointing. Next up is AC volts. Have a nice plug hooked into the mains. Let's see if we can get 120 volts AC on the nine. Here we go. And yeah, nice and fast, 121 volts. And there's our frequency at 60 hertz. In terms of resistance, this only goes up to a paltry 10 mega ohm. Mm, what are they thinking? So this old fluke demo board here, I mean, we don't need to have anything. We'll have a 0.5 ohm resistor, so let's try that at least. Now you see what I mean about the screen fading all the time? Kind of drives me nuts. So, yeah, oh gosh, wake up, wake up. Yeah, don't like it, don't like it. All right, here we go. This is a 0.5 ohm resistor. And obviously we are below that continuity threshold. So it's giving us that continuity beep. Next up, resistance decade box sitting at five mega ohm. Let's see how fast it can. Oh, not bad. 3.9, three, one mega ohm. Yeah, fairly fast. No complaints in that department. 80,000, sorry, 800 kilo ohm, 600 kilo ohm, 300. Not bad, not bad at all. I tell you, the screen really drives me up the creek. Um, it just keeps fading out after seconds at times. Drives me nuts. Okay, now we're in capacitance mode. Now on some websites, stop doing that. On some websites, they're claiming this is the fastest capacitor testing meter ever in the history of multimeters. What? Oh boy, is it so fast? Here we go. Wow, one second, huh? Yeah. <sighs> okay, well, it was pretty lame. Let's try it again. Obviously, it's not the fastest. Oh. Here we go. 4,700 microfarad, 4.7 millifarad. We are still in the microfarad range for the love of God. Oh, there we are, 4,511. Now there's no hold on this meter, so eh. Anyway, I don't know. It was okay. It was not wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, fast. Here's the 10,000 just for the heck of it. Here we go. Can it, can it, come on, come on, put a smile on my face, S9, do something. Because right now I'm not feeling it, I'm not feeling it at all. Over limit. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. All right, well, you be the judge. How fast was that? To me, it was okay. It was certainly not anything to get excited about. What is it? Why are people getting so excited about this meter? Look at the reviews on online, on AliExpress. I mean, five-star reviews, hundreds of people saying they like it, they like it, they like it. What do they like? Honestly, I am not impressed thus far. Not impressed at all. They're not giving this thing away. We're not talking five, ten bucks. No, I see this thing going for like 30 bucks on some sites, US dollars. I paid 24 Canadian, which I still think is a little high for what I'm getting. <sighs> Next up is diode mode. Now, once again, uh, it's calling itself a smart multimeter. I just call it painful. But anyway, 
Starting off with the green LED, and it has no idea what it's trying to read. Nothing on the yellow, not a red, which should be a breeze, really. Nothing. Blue, of course not, and why even bother? So, yeah, a zero for five. Painful. Ugh. Okay, well, in all fairness, that was diode mode, not LED mode. Maybe it will actually do a little better with a diode. Let's try it. Here we go. And yeah, there's a forward voltage drop. So, yeah, it seems to work for diodes, but LEDs, your SOL. Already, it's continuity time, even though it is a smart multimeter. How smart is it? How quick is it? That's the question. Three, two, one. Well, it is definitely loud and latched, but it ain't fast. Now it takes at least a second before we get that continuity going. Oh well, pretty well what I expected. It's definitely loud, 87.8 decibels in continuity mode. Next up is NCV mode. So I've hit the voltage alert and we have our veil velt showing up on the screen. Let's take our 120 volt plug and you can see, wow, something actually works. So no problems with the NCV detection. Now let's put it into live mode. I'll take up my probe and I will wander into the abyss. And yes, something works. Something works. Ah. It's a thing of beauty, really. Cut. Anyway, same idea. Flashlight. It's okay. No complaints. Comes in handy, I guess. In terms of brightness, they both seem to be equally bright. Perhaps the S9 a tad brighter, but eh. It's a flashlight. Here we are taking a look on the inside. Now, really not a whole lot to report here. Remember, these don't do current, not even milliamps. So in terms of the overall uh, innards, there's not a lot going on. We have the older S7 on the left, the new 9 on the right. Both have that PTC on the voltage side of things, and they have that same retention mechanism for the leads. And in terms of the soldering, Actually, I'm going to give that one to the older bottle. It just seems to be better done. The uh, soldering job in here leaves a lot to be desired. In fact, uh, yeah, kind of crappy. On the inside, power-wise, they're being powered by those button styles. CR2032's uh, three volt rating on the battery. Uh, these are lithiums. And you know what? Pick yourself up some spares because they don't have a great shelf life. Here we have pretty well the same design, although a little bit busier, a lot more tracks on the 9 as opposed to the 7. We have a couple of voltage regulators and uh, some other transistors, really not a whole lot. Um, the ICs are both cobbed and there are there is, let me just move that down, the LED flashlight identical for both. Fab date right here, 1926. I'm going to assume that is uh, June 2nd, 2019. Over at the top, this is what was giving us that really good NCV. Quite surprising, actually. I was not expecting something so verbose. I wasn't going to, but just because of that, I'm going to pop it over and see what we've got for NCV. On the other side of the board, we do have another transistor here, an 8-pin, but it is completely covered. Maybe not. Let's see. What does that say? Yeah, unfortunately, I can't get anything off that. No, no. Over here, we've got our piezo, our little tiny piezo. On the opposite side, of course, no shielding, no surprise. Yeah, so generally speaking, really nothing to get too excited about. I'm going to put it all back together and come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the B side. ADM S9CL. Oh, gosh, B side. You disappointed me again. What's all the hoopla about? Honestly, I have no idea. You can call it smart. You can call it whatever. You can't fool me. The S9 was actually slower and not as useful than its berated S7 younger brother, which I really thought was dismal six months ago. 
They're definitely not giving away this multimeter. No, it is pricey. Like I said, around 30 bucks US. I've seen it. The display of this meter drove me insane. I've never had one of these EB10 displays go into this low mode so often, so quickly. Basically rendering it useless until I turned it back on and off and on again. Crazy! Yeah, maybe it's true or mass. Maybe it's 10,000 count, but you know what? What good is 10,000 counts if you can't see the darn thing? No, keep on walking. There's a lot better choices out there. If you just want to check batteries and do basic stuff, buy an 830 clone for seven, eight bucks. It's a lot better value. The B-Site ADM S9CL gets a dismal 1.5 out of five stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Hey, as always, love the comments, love the feedback. Keep it coming. Christmas is around the corner. Ho, ho, ho. Don't forget that live chat giveaway coming up. It's going to be a lot of fun. Till the next one.